this weekend. You going to see the fight? No, just taking some shows, do a little dancing. What kind of dancing you going to do with them two left feet you got there? Two flat left feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you don't watch it, you may find a flat left foot in your navel. Yeah, you and who else? Just me, chump. Ooh. And a flat left foot in your navel. Ooh. Look out now. You're going to get your clutch stuff again. Up your Watch your lips because they may get you into something that your behind can't get you out of. Ooh. And you may have two left feet dead in your sternum. I think we can get it on right now. What? What? Right now. Because I am tired of you, man. Every time you come around here, it's been words back and forth. I'm sick of it. I don't care how much you swell up. Everything's swollen. Yeah, yeah. Keep an eye on them now. Now. No, wait. Don't, 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 don't throw no punches. I'm going to talk to you for one second. Now, look. Let me tell you something. Before, no, before we get it on, I just want to tell you something. Man. This is all. I love you. <laughs>
She got me. <laughs> Thank you. She's, she's all finished now. Mm. Mr. Williams, Mr. Foster. I'm sorry. You gotta do it. I said no. We're at the end of the line. There's got to be another way. There's got to be another way. I'll tell you what it is. You've got to do it. You've got to be crazy. I haven't done that since I was in the army. You did it at Sister Joan's birthday party last now, year. Now, that don't beautiful. count. I was it just was. fooling around that I night. I saw it. A little fun. That's... Look, I got it all figured out. I'm taking Beth to New Orleans for the weekend to celebrate our anniversary. Now, you and Dee Dee come along and help us celebrate our anniversary. And while we're there... No. Listen to me. Some of these lodge members have been there for 60 years or more, and they're our responsibility. You better change your pants before people think you can't hold your water. You gotta do it! an hour late already. Maybe they're taking so long as a good sign. I think I better go in and tell them to start the meeting. Yeah, go ahead. Clyde, honey, the world is not run on CP time. But you're gonna be late for your own funeral. I hope so. Billy ain't here. No. What'd they say? health and strength today is not a good day for us. The city has refused to grant us the extension that we wanted. And so I guess uh, the best way to start this meeting is with the financial report on our situation from our treasurer, 
Brother Billy Foster. Now, we all know the situation. We have known for the past three years that the city was going to tear down this section commencing next year. In six weeks, we got to be out of this building. Two years ago, you all made pledges to the new building fund, and you fulfilled those pledges, but that's not enough. Brothers and sisters, for the past two years, we're raking and scraping, but it is not enough. For the initial cost of the construction is $55,000. That means we got to have at least that before we can start. Now, so far in the kitty, we got $18,000. <laughs> Now, what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? Right. Right. Tighten up and dig deeper. Now, I know it's going to be rough. It is now or never. Now, the sons and daughters of Chaka have always thrived on adversity. Yes, we live to overcome suffering. Yes. We live to create light where there was darkness. Yes. We have got to put our heart in it. Yes. We've got to put our soul in it. Yes. We've got to put our spirit in it. Yes. And we got to put some more money in it. should be in a bank. It was. We can go to jail if this don't work. It's gonna work. It's been a long time. Yeah, but you still got to touch, because I remember at Sister Joel's party with Victor Brown, you had him go around there crowing like a rooster in a hen house. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> $2,000. Mortgage my furniture, sold my car, closed out my bank account. $2,000 for me, $18,000 for the lodge, $20,000. $20,000. No. Oh, no, man. I, I'm a milkman. You're a factory worker. We don't look like nobody could come up with no $20,000. We're going to look like we got a million. How? You just leave that up to me. I'll take care of that. Our women must never know nothing about this. Never. They're just going to New Orleans to have a good time.
that's for showing me one of the nicest times I've ever had in my life. Is uh, that all I'm gonna get? Well, that's all you're gonna get in public. <laughs> no. <laughs> you fresh. <laughs> <laughs> you know you love it. Yes, I do. Ooh. And tonight I'm gonna lay a blockbuster on you. Tonight. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna have a block for you to bust too, baby. So you better bring a whole lot of hammer. Ooh, have a hammer. We'll travel and go deep into your crevice. <laughs> Well, it's the truth. Well, I know, but I certainly wish you two would stop putting your business in the street like that, and that's all. Are you gonna sit there and act all proper like Clyde ain't been hitting your switch regularly? Uh-uh, no. I ain't in it. I could say something, but I won't. <laughs> of course, Clyde and me have relations. But we certainly don't let the whole world know about it. Do we, honey? Mm -hmm. Me and Dee Dee, we don't make no noise. We whisper a lot. <laughs> 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 oh, baby. Oh, baby. Shh. We all groan. And we know what's happening besides this our anniversary. Yes, well, I know that. But suppose somebody who didn't know you heard you talking like that. I mean, what would they say? They would say I was having a horny conversation with a man in a fancy restaurant and he was picking up on my vibe. Picking up on them. I didn't know you were approved. Well, I am not approved. I am not approved. But there are some things that I won't do. And that's all. Well, la di da. a good lunch. Now I'm ready for me a nap. But first I'm gonna go take a wee wee. Dee Dee, come on, go powder room with me. Come on, girl. <laughs> you tell me why. Why? fellow with the pink flower, the biggest of the big time gamblers in Louisiana, Kansas City Mac, owns this restaurant right here. Your books don't look good and I don't like it. 22% all can only mean one thing, bad management. You, you got to start increasing your volume now in all your operations, especially in the gambling, joy houses, and the liquor business. Of course, inflation does have something Inflation to do that. ain't bothering Biggie Smalls and his boys in Kentucky and Alabama. They rolling right along, heading in this direction. And it's your territory they're gonna grab first. We're pushing as hard as we can. We're on top of it seven days a week. That's not good enough. You got to come up with some new ideas. That's why Biggie Smalls and his boys keep beating us to the punch. Got them young college-educated faggots doing us thinking for them. Maybe y'all too old. Maybe y'all need to take a walk. Maybe I ought to get some of them young college-educated faggots to do my thinking for me. Huh? Huh? Now, how things looking on this fight? Not so good. We're getting plenty of action on 40th Street Black, but nothing on Farnsworth. Well, that figures. Even Farnsworth, mom ain't dumb enough to bet on him. Well, look, use your heads. If there ain't no Farnsworth money around, close your books and set this one out. Oh. 
anybody running into him better be driving a Mack truck. Okay, let's go see the challenger. What's his name? Bootney Farnsworth. Bootney Farnsworth. No, dear. That's Bootney Farnsworth there. Look, kid. Move. Use your jab, understand? Don't try to slug it out. If you get tagged, clinch. Keep your gloves up high and protect yourself. Okay, let's go. Come on, go get him. Take him. Street Black is gonna kill that poor baby. Here's your press card. Where'd you get these? I printed them up myself. Some sleep. On the basis of your last fight, a split decision over Martin. Do you feel that you deserve a shot at the title? Martin was a pushover. Bootney was carrying him. <laughs> I hear your sparring partner decked you today. He you? slipped. Bootney, words going around you're not really in shape. What do you say about that? Lies! Propaganda! Then why are you a five to one underdog? Because we do our fighting in the ring, not in the newspaper like that big mouth, empty headed sissy. Can we quote you, Bootney? Yeah, you can quote him. You tell the world, when we get through it, 40th Street Black, he's gonna look like 30th Street Yellow. <laughs> Bootney, any truth to the rumor that you're developing a secret punch? Don't answer that, Bootney. Everything in its proper place. If you lose Bootney, what are your plans? We can't answer that. Because losing is the last thing we think about. How long the fight going to last, Bootney? It won't go the distance. Bootney, if you win, will you be an active champion? We'll fight anybody, anywhere. One little personal question, Bootney. How's your love life? <laughs> How's his love life? How's his love life? <laughs> He's got his hands full. <laughs> OK, it's time to get my fighters some rest. It's up and out. Let's go. You know what to write. You know what pictures to print. I appreciate you coming down. We'll see you when we're in the championship, OK? Out you go, fellas. Thanks a lot for coming by. Appreciate it a lot. Mr. Ellison? You really think I got a chance? He's gonna beat your brains in, Bootney. 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 You got something, but we just can't seem to... Yes, you do have a chance, son. But not a good one, huh? No, not a good chance. But you never know. Come on, kid. Get some rest. We got another day's work ahead of us.
innermost reaches of your heart, you are a tiger. Tiger! You are capable of great feats of strength and courage. Strength and courage. You can beat any fighter in the world. You will win the championship. I will? Yes. Out of sight. Tomorrow at your sparring session, you will demonstrate all the power you are capable of, and on the night of the fight, you will win over 40th Street Black. Win! Win! Invincible! Win! Mean! Win! Downright nasty with strength! Now, go to sleep. Mm. 
You. Just as I thought, who am I? Do you realize how many rules you've broken regarding a single occupancy room in the state of Louisiana? Do you realize how many laws you've broken, sir, since you've entered this room? Well, who are you? Who am I? Who am I? Ha! I work for this hotel. I am the house detective. And this is my assistant, Frank. And Frank will read you, read him his rights. His rights? Yes, the rights. Rights. <clears throat> Anything you say may be held against you. And it doesn't matter because we've got enough against you. Now, you young lady, I'll get to you in a second, but you first. Now, what is your name? Rufus Isaacs. Rufus Isaacs. Are you married, Rufus? No. Uh-huh. 
Okay. Where do you work? Right here in the hotel. Right here in the hotel. And Rufus, it's going to really be heavy on you. Now, what do you do here in the hotel? I'm the house detective. House detective. I see. Well, that about closes this whole thing out, uh, doesn't it? Yes. Well, you, you got us. Uh, you got us. Well, I, I guess you want to put the handcuffs on us, take us on down to the manager's office and explain to him how you uh, caught us behind the sofa while you were in here making love to a married woman. Well, wait a minute now. What? Well, I just wait a minute. No, no, I, I don't understand what you mean. We have to go down and talk to the manager. No, no, no. It's, what? You know, it's, it's cool. <laughs> It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Rufus said cool. <laughs> Rufus said it's cool. <laughs> I knew he's hip. <laughs> With the name Rufus. Rufus. Yeah. <laughs> you want to take us down? Forget about it, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now have three rounds of sparring between the challenger Bootney Farnsworth and, and, uh, oh, hell, what's the use? Nothing but hollers the rest of the way. Just let us... We believe in change and we're prepared for it with new techniques and new approaches. And as for our part, we feel that you're the best pieces of manpower available in this whole region. Thank you, Mr. Smart. I call me Big. We hope to be able to move into this area peacefully. No violence. But if Mac and his boys prove uh, stubborn, then what has to be will be. And that's where you come in. And if you're as good as your reputation, and we can look forward to a smooth transition. Come in. Excuse me. I'll give the brothers a drink. <laughs> Mongo Slate from New York, huh? That's right. Biggie Smalls. Well, what can I do for you? I hear you're taking bets on fights. Big bets. I like Farnsworth. Ten grand. Mr. Slade, sit down. Let's have a talk. Sir, there's a man I said wants to see you about placing a bet. Told me it's a restaurant, not a bookie joint. I did. He said big money. Okay, let's see what he looks like.
want to see me? Yeah, I want to see you. About what? My name is Mongo Slade. I'm from out of New York City. I'm here, my boys. I want to make a bet with you. Why don't you take it to one of the local bookies? Oh, uh, mainly because when we go to the local bookies, ain't none of them going to take your bet unless you say it's okay. So we just come to see you. How much you want to bet? Well, um, who are these people here? These are my partners. Yeah. Bubble Top Woodson, Fish and Chips Freddy, Jody Tibbs. How much you want to bet? I want to bet $10,000. Five to one odds, Farnsworth to win. We would have bet $20,000, but we don't want to overload your circuit. Count it. No need. Mongo Slade. Mongo Slade. New York City. That's right. I think we can do business. Um... You see, Kansas City, when we, uh, when we lose, we pay off, dig? Now, when, when we win, we don't want to have to go chasing y'all all over Louisiana. You understand? You win, we'll be here. That's right. Yeah, everything be cool. Come on now. Okay, fellas, you both know the rules. I want you to obey my commands. When I say break, I want you both to step back clean. Keep your punches up, protect yourself at all times. This is it, brother. Shake hands now and come out fighting. I just hope he's still under. What?
you ain't clean as a monk, you're gonna have a short life. What? You may be living a little too dangerously, Mr. Slade. You can't sell no whoop tickets here in Kansas City. Now, we're gonna be proud to see you had a brave bread. You got my meaning? Meet me at my warehouse on Macon Street in half an hour. We got you. You better go unhypnotize Farnsworth before we do anything else. I'm gonna make a phone call. You and Didi get packed as soon as you can, and when you're finished, here's what I want you to do. Now, don't ask questions. on you, champ. Never laid a glove on you. Huh? Champ, you mean I won? Of course! Oh, kid, you were terrific. Better than the last sparring session. Last sparring session? I, I won? You mean I'm the champ? That's right! <laughs> I'm the champ? I'm the champ? That's right! That's right! Because I am bad! Oh. That's right, because I am bad! I'm so bad that sometimes I even scares myself! <laughs> and don't nobody mess with me, otherwise I'm gonna drive on their face! I, I am the champ! I am the champ! Now who am I? The champ! Okay. Who? The, the champ! That's right, and don't y'all forget it! <laughs> we gonna have a party in this hotel so big, we gonna be boogieing down! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hold it. We're going to wait for a call. We want to make sure that neither fighter was drugged or hyped up. Know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Take your time. Take your time. Who the hell is he? This is my... I'm his partner. What'd you do to 40th Street Black? What you mean? How'd you put the fix in? You accusing us of a cheat? Thought you might want to share a professional secret. You lost, Mac. Live with it. Live with it. Yeah. There's your money. Count it. No need to count it. 
Sure hope you boys don't have an accident on the way home with all that money. Keep an eye on them for a while. We ought to know where they are in case we need to put our hands on them. Oh, baby, what you trying to do to me? I'm blind out of mind with love. Mm, good, sweet thing, give me shoulder. I know this good loving cannot be out. Get down and do that till the morning comes. Baby, rock my soul. I'm yours to hold. You love me so long. Congratulations, Mr. Ellison. Oh, hello, Mr. Mack. The boy was fantastic. Thank you. He came into his own tonight. <laughs> it all started the last day we sparred. He knocked out all of his sparring partners, smashed up the ring, and he hit the heavy bag so hard that the ceiling caved in. <laughs> no kidding. I'm telling you, man. And he must have really had himself psyched up. Well, this. psyched up is what it was, because there were times when I didn't even know him myself. <laughs> my, can you beat that? Yeah, it was like he was in a trance, you know? <laughs> my, my. It was like he was in a trance. Let's get to a phone. and sisters, welcome to the new home of the sons and daughters of Jaka. The storm is past, and once again, our mighty ship is back on course.
I want to thank especially our treasurer and vice marshal for those successful investments they made on the stock market. Thanks to their efforts, we are now in a brand new home. We have a brand new daycare center right downstairs and $10,000 toward the new nursery school building fund. Now, I promised that there wasn't going to be any speeches today, and I'm going to keep my promise. Uh, but before I do sit down, there's one more thing I just got to say. Now, no longer are we going to have to crawl on the back roads of no can do. From now on, we are riding on the freeway of yes, we can too. <laughs> So let's eat, drink, and enjoy ourselves on this most momentous occasion. I thank you. Pardon me, sisters. Yes, may we help you? You certainly can. Now, I'm MacArthur Clutch. Me and my associates would like to speak to your husbands regarding investments. Investments? Yes, you see, we know that your husbands have been doing some small-time investing to help out the lodge, like some bets they made in the stock market. We're here to show them how they can increase their dividends. In other words, how they can get paid back more. Oh. <laughs> yes, you see, we represent a New Orleans breakage firm. He means brokerage firm. We want to show your husband some breaks. Yeah, we'd like to show him how they can make more breaks for themselves and the lodge. Well, look, we really don't know too much about what you're saying, but why don't I take you over to my husband and then you and him can talk it out, all right? Oh, that would be just dandy. Okay. I tell you, I know this bird from another life. There's some men here who want to talk to you about interest and dividends. Fellas, these men are from New Orleans. They represent a brokerage firm. The strong arm brokerage firm of New Orleans. <coughs> Our motto is we get even, and you can count on it. They're here to help the lodge make some money. Money? Look, somebody say money? Yes, Grand Supreme. Uh, <coughs> these, um, <coughs> this is Mr. McCarthy Clutch and his associates, a broker. Well, now. How do you do, gentlemen? How do you do? Just fine, sir. Actually, there's not too much to discuss at this time, Grand Supreme. Just a few minor details for preliminary purposes. But I was wondering if I might borrow your treasury to discuss this matter in private. You know, all the boring details. Well, I think that would be just fine. Now, uh, I'd like to go with you myself, but my place is down here right now. But why don't you take Brother Williams along as my proxy? Oh, I was just going to ask you if that might be possible. Of course it's possible. Now, Beth and Dee Dee, show these kind gentlemen right up to my office. We'll just be a minute. Us breakers don't take too long to do nothing. I want you to follow me, please. <laughs> well, we'll see you all when you get downstairs, here. Bye, baby. I'm gonna get him! Oh, wait! Wait a minute! Wait! 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 Wait a minute! Wait! Wait! Not now, Bubble wait. Top. Not here. Wait! Oh, Mineralize him! I'm gonna let you have him, Bubble Top. You can pick him clean. But first, we talk. Dishonest crooks, hypocrites. You made fools of us, Mr. Mongo Slade. You want a small victory, but you're gonna lose the war. Your wife's gonna be with us, and your lives gonna be marching back and forth to the cemetery. But we don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about Farnsworth hypnosis and ten grand at five to one. Hypnosis? We don't know nothing about no hypnosis. Do you know anything about hypnosis? No, we don't know nothing about no hypnosis. Bubble Top knows about hypnosis. Want me to show you what he knows about it? No. No, 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 no. no. We, we, we know a little. 
Thought he'd no suspicion. Just a little. You put the whammy on Farnsworth, made him think he was Superman. Then you put the bite on us and disappeared. Took a while to figure it out and a while longer to find you, but we got your asses now. What you looking at me like that for? You the one who put the whammy on farm. Don't you look at me like that. And don't look at none of my boys, neither. Look at him. Any of you guys feel sleepy? Now, cut that out. Where'd you learn to put the whammy on people like that? The Army. Medical Corps. Well, Bubble Top gonna put both of y'all to sleep soon enough. If you don't jump at this proposition, I'm gonna lay on you. Proposition? What, what, what proposition? One that will get our money back. And at the same time, we wipe out Biggie Smalls. Put him out of business for good. The rematch between Farnsworth and 40th Street Black is coming up one week from tonight. The six of us in this room are the only people in the world that know what happened last time. Not Farnsworth, nor any of his people have the slightest idea what went down. Quiet as has kept Farnsworth as his old self again. His sparring partners are knocking him around the ring. He lost that confidence you gave him, and now his punches can't break an egg. So? So you come back to Orleans and hypnotize Farnsworth again three days before the fight. So the whole world can see that he is back in winning condition and everybody will want to bet on him. Me and my boys will cover those bets. Then on the morning of the fight, you will dehypnotize Farnsworth so when he climbs in that ring, he'll be his old scared self again. After the fight, we'll be even and you'll be free to go. Well, how do we know we can trust you? I, I trust you. Me too, me too. <laughs> so what's it gonna be? You coming back to Orleans, or are you going to ask the Grand Supreme to make out your funeral arrangements? Well, I've always enjoyed going to New Orleans. Yeah. I, I, I'd, rather go, I'd rather go to New Orleans <laughs> than the cemetery. Well, 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 Mongo Slave. What can I do for you? I want to place a bet on the fight. No kidding. How much of a bet? 50,000. On who? Bootney Farnsworth. You know, lightning doesn't strike the same place twice. Says who? <laughs> uh, look, excuse me a minute. I got to discuss with my colleagues here before I can okay a bet of such magnitude. You understand, don't you? Brother. Take your time. Brother. <laughs> Last time that chump was in here, he burned us good. He knows something. I can feel it. Yeah, me too, boss. We're going to have to stall him for a couple of days. Right. Well, let's take a look at Farnsworth. See if we can get some kind of line on him. Because if that guy knows something, there's no reason why we shouldn't take advantage of it, right? Right. Mongo, I suspect we can cover your bet. 
But you're gonna have to give us a couple of days while I get some extra cash in from out of town. Just so long as you cover me before fight time, Biggie. No, oh, nothing to worry about. In that case, I'll ease on. But I ain't shuffle along Mac and his old time donkey. Biggest smalls. Your mama still working in them ten dollar houses? Some other time. Some other time. One of these days I'ma climb all over you. <laughs> it take more guts than you got, Biggie. You got to bring ass to get ass. You're colorful, Mac. Dumb. Old-fashioned and out of style, but colorful. Biggie, you out your territory. And I don't like it when people come into my town without paying their respect. Well, we no longer consider this town as out of our territory. Watch your mouth, son. In fact, I brought you a message from the boys in Kentucky and Alabama. They say you run this town like a sissy, and they think you ought to consider retiring. We're ready to talk a deal. Deal? Listen. Mississippi and Louisiana belong to me and my boys, and you'd be one dead suck along with all the rest of these young college clowns if you try that expansion stuff on us. You know how things are nowadays with the gambling and sporting life in the Black Belt. There's no need for two of us. You got that right, Biggie. Now, Mac, I wouldn't like to see no violence. You ain't gonna have to. I'm gonna hit you so hard you won't see nothing, ever. Meantime, while you're a guest in my town, if you and your boys looking for some action, we betting on Farnsworth. If you all like 40th Street Black, I cover everything you got, sucker. Hey, boss, you see what I see? These guys are working for Mac. Well, I'll be damned. Was Mac all along who beat us out of that bread in the first fight? Yeah. Looks like we were set up. And it seems that lightning is trying to strike in the same place twice. Hold on, boys, to shoot. whole thing has finally come together. Oh, yeah, boy? Yeah. Slade comes over to us to drop some heavy cash on Farnsworth, thinking we'd be only too glad to pick it up because the word is out that Farnsworth ain't got nothing going for it. Mac is betting on Farnsworth while telling us that we can bet on 40th Street Black. So where's all the heavy money going? On 40th Street Black. Right. Sucker money, every last cent of it. Because here it is, the last day of sparring, and Farnsworth changes up. After playing possum for all these weeks, and for the suckers, it's too late, and Mac knows it. 
And if we hadn't seen this session, we'd have bet on black too. And we'd have been cleaned out. Mac is a fox, a dirty old fox. You call Kentucky and Alabama. And get every cent you can muster up in here to me as fast as you can get it. Right, boss. We are gonna hit every book in this town with big bucks, understand? Nothing but heavy, heavy bets. You get the word around town that we're betting on Farnsworth. And you tell all takers that the odds are negotiable. It's as good as done, boss. Okay, you contact every book in town. Tell them that Biggie Smalls and his boys are betting very heavy on Farnsworth, and we're covering every cent. Let's go. Mac. Good. Fellas, we're on our way. Yeah. Everything's set. It's time to dehypnotize our friend and do it right. Understand? Yeah, we're, we're leaving now. Why you have to go so early? It's 8 o'clock in the morning. Mr. Clutch, dear, you plan a long day. Well, make a lot of money for the lodge, honey. Sure. Mac just called. It's all set. It's up to you now. He's in Mexico by right now. Well, come on, we have to catch him at his hotel. <laughs> come on, but stick it, stick it, stick it. There you go, stick it, stick it. All right, all right, all right. Cross with the right, cross the right, cross the right, cross the right. There you go, there you go. Shoot some jab, jab, jab. Fellas, we'd go ahead and put him to bed. I don't know what I did with the key. I must have left it down in the bar somewhere. Uh, oh, miss, pardon me. What, do you have a key? Could you open the door? Because I left the key down in the bar somewhere. I don't know. Thank you so much. Certainly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you.
What the hell's going on? Oh, uh, do you have your card? Get, get, get your card out. Oh, you got to see if you can find your card. Oh, my card. Here it is! Here's the card! No, this is from the suit. Uh, uh, we, we represent the Champs uh, hometown. We are the local board, uh, Chamber of Commerce from the Champs hometown. And uh, <clears throat> this is my friend here, as you can see. Now, uh, yes, you did, of course. And, that, and you're right about all of it. But uh, we wrote a song for the Champs. Coming from Possums for Alabama. This is uh, Mr. Sebastian Sebastian. He's the composer of the song. This is Sebastian. Now, you're probably uh, wondering about the window. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, uh, you see. When we first arrived here, we came up to see the champ legitimately. Came up, and we said, we'd like to see the champ. Now, people said, you cannot see the champ the day before the fight. So, my friend and I took it upon ourselves to come out on ledges and do all sorts of things, mainly because in our hometown of Possums Fall, Alabama, which is the champ's hometown also, there is an orphanage. Now, this orphanage has real orphans. I mean, these kids, they don't even have things. Some of them, we don't know where they came from. We got uh, one green one. Poor child. And he loves the champ more than anybody because he doesn't have anyone to identify with. But if you say the champ's name, why they start acting just like they had real parents and they're running around writing their names on the walls. We decided to take it upon ourselves to come in through the window. Trying to get to the jail. See if there's some way that we could sing the song. <laughs> so we'd like to sing it for you if it's all right. Mm -hmm. Oh, champ, we love you, yes. yes. We do. We lose you in if you win or lose. Huh. Oh, champ, oh, champ, we whip you through thick and thin. Get down, get down. Call the police. Now what the hell's the sense of talking about building a recreation center for this area when our community relations team sits on their fat asses and blows steam? $2,500 in six months. Is that the best they can do? Now you tell them to get off their tails, get out in the community and relate. Tell them I want to see some improvements or I'm going to have their heads. Now go ahead. Open it up. My name is Lieutenant Bottomy, 27 Precinct. We got you here on a variety of charges. You have? Breaking and entering, criminal trespass, criminal mischief, burglary, attempted larceny, attempted murder. Yeah. It all depends on what your intentions were to Farnsworth. But we didn't try to murder anybody. We wouldn't hurt a fly. Then just what were you doing there? 
Well, see, we're from the champ's hometown, Billy and me, and we came up to sing him a song that we specially composed for him. And, and uh, I had to have the right vocal pitch in order to get the right vocal level. I'm sure you understand. Just listen to the sound of the charms. Just listen, 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 listen. What you mean, we? I got us out of that mess. And from now on, I'm gonna do the thinking. All along now, you've been telling me what to do, and Matt's been telling me what... Well, now I'm gonna tell me what to do, and I'm gonna tell you what to do. Huh? All right, what are we gonna do? Well, since there's no way to get to Farnsworth to dehypnotize him... Oh, ho, ho, ho! What are you going to do with it? I'm going to invest it. With Mr. Clutch? In a matter of speaking, yes. Now, uh, we need you, and the Lodge needs you, more than ever before. Now, I don't want you asking any questions. I don't want you to get upset. I want you to listen carefully. We cannot afford any mistakes. Biggie Smalls. Who wants him? I want to make a bet on the fight. What makes you think he takes bets on fights? Well, if he don't, I guess I'll just have to take my $5,000 and go someplace else. Now, won't I? Biggie Smalls. You do your business with me for the time being. Where's your five thousand dollars? On who? It's right there on the paper. You serious? Is there salt in the sea? Does honey come from a bee? You bet your ass I'm serious. Sure you know what you're doing, lady? If I didn't, I wouldn't be here, sugar. $5,000 at 20 to 1 odds. That's right. And you're betting on, uh... Betting exactly what's on that paper. If you win, I'll move on. You keep my five grand, and bless you, sugar. If you lose, I'll be back for 100000 Deal? Lady, you must have money to burn. Deal.
Excuse me. Yeah? Hello, this is Zach. I got a crazy lady down here who's putting down 5,000 bills on the weirdest bet I ever heard. She wants... <laughs> 5,000 to 20 to 1, huh? Probably some nut. She got the money there? Uh-huh. Yeah, we'll take it. What the hell, as long as the money's real? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> 15 rounds of boxing. For the middleweight championship of the world. Judging at ringside, Marvin Lewis. On my left at ringside, Lloyd Gowdy. Your referee, the man in charge in the ring. Giving instructions after introductions, Larry Rosadia. Here we go, in this corner, the challenger, weighing 160 pounds, Wearing black trunks with a white stripe, the former middleweight champion of the world from Bigfoot, Mississippi, 40th Street Black. And his opponent, defending his crown, wearing white trunks with a black stripe, the middleweight champion of the world, Bootney Farnsworth. Okay, fellas, you both know the rules. This is for the middleweight championship of the world. I want you to obey my commands. When I tell you to break, I want you both to break clean, but to protect yourself at all times. Shake hands now, and good luck to both of you. No good crooked turkeys. They crossed us. They beat us again. Mac, that dirty, rotten double crosser. This is what he was ringing from the start, and we couldn't see it. We couldn't see it. That broad. They sent that broad in his axe with five grand and 20 to one, and they fixed the fight knowing it was going to end in the first round to draw. Except that frowsy broad up there to make that stupid $5,000 bet. At 20 to one, he stands to score 100 grand. Now let's go. We got to get the axe. We find them, and we kill them.
a crazy bet. She just left. You paid her? Well, you okayed the bet. Oh, damn it, Zach. Where'd she go? I don't know. You, you don't know? Hey, wait a minute, boss. We know who sent her. Yeah, them two nappyheads from Atlanta, they're gonna be dead before sunrise. It's got to be somebody they trust a hell of a lot to help with this con. A wife! Or which one? I'll be damned, both of them. Them dumb field hands smarter than I thought. I bet your biggest smalls got hit for a hundred grand, too. The lines are all dead. The payphone across the street. <laughs> sir, but Mr. Smalls is out for the evening. I'm not sure when he'll be back. Oh, you're welcome. Out for the evening? Uh, let's get to his hotel. The only thing you're going to leave here with is your life and the message. Oh. You know who you are, and we know who sent you. Who sent me? Tell Kansas City Mac if he wants this money to come here and get it himself. Just tell him to come on up here. Just tell him to come up here, and he'll get the big payoff. Kansas City Mac. Kansas City Mac. You think I work for that small-time country chump? You surprise me, Mr. Smalls. You ain't got the smarts I thought you had. What? I work for the new syndicate, sugar. I'm on the road ten days out of every month. All I do is move money from one city to another. When they win, I pick up. When they lose, I deliver. Now, that money is there. And they want it in Chicago with me by morning. Lion. You try me. Will you tell this child to get that thing out of my face before I make her eat it? You better let me call Chicago. Yeah, give me uh, Chicago sugar. 225-3599. Hello, Chief. I'm having trouble with the pickup. He's right here. Uh -huh. Say, are you crazy? Now, listen, I understand that you're six foot two and good looking. Now, how would you like to be four foot two and ugly? 
air condition your brain. They arrange for you to spend some time in the bottom of the ocean in a box of cement. You get up off of the money and keep your good looks and your life. Now, we want the woman and the money in Chicago in the morning. Nice talking to you, Biggie. Take it. Jive turkey. See you, sugar.
Lieutenant, uh, uh, you have to excuse us for um, barging in on you like this. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we turned down the wrong alley. <laughs> you see, we were looking for the bail entrance, not the jail. <laughs> Relax, fellas, it's all over. We know what you fellas have done, and it's going to follow you for life. Life? We plead in the fifth. We want our lawyers. See, I told you they were unduly modest. You better let me go over and talk to them and convince them that they should take the rap. Now, if y'all don't go along with what me and Clyde is about to put down, we're going to start singing like the Temptations and everybody going to do some time around here. But y'all going to do about 30, 40 years before a man even start thinking about the role. So all I want you to do is smile, see? Be sure that you're going to cooperate with whatever we do. Oh, this is beautiful. They're ready to confess. They are ready to confess that in the past years, they have wrecked havoc among the brethren of the community, sausage nose, Chitlin eyes. And I say to you that without the clutch and Hiawatha Smalls, Hiawatha, hmm. when they heard about the police community relations team trying to get money to aid the recreation fund for the little slum kids, it brought tears to their eyes. They shed tears. Tears! Ha <laughs> ha! And so when they heard about it, they came running forth through a door that they didn't know anything about. Just came running. And you saw them. They were excited, like little children. Oh, 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 we don't know where we are. We don't know who we are, anything like that. And we plead the fifth, because they're gangsters. And that's why they looked funny when they ran in here. Didn't do it on purpose. They wanted to help. And so, that's why they're here. To aid the police department. So, on behalf of Mr. MacArthur Clutch, $10,000 for the community team's recreation center. <laughs> and on behalf of Mr. Hiawatha Smalls, another $10,000 for the 27th Precinct Community Youth Center. Because Mr. Smalls and Mr. Clutch are such concerned citizens, they have one more donation to make. These two reconstructed gentlemen asked that $5,000 each be donated to a large nursery school fund in Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> oh, this my. is for Atlanta, this, this, the nursery back there. Now, uh, oh, yes, uh, <laughs> excuse that thing. Last thing I do, I'm gonna get you for this. Oh, well, that's really too bad. Oh, it sure would be. I mean, that would mean Lieutenant Bottomley would have to open that envelope with all that evidence. It's really too bad because I like some of these guys. You lying. Uh, Lieutenant Bottomley. Ooh. Would you tell him about the envelope? Yes, I have an envelope in my safe that's to be opened in case my friends here meet with any untimely accident or come down with a severe case of death. <laughs> You can trust us, Lieutenant. <laughs> we wouldn't dream of hurting these two fine no. gentlemen. Good. Just in case, I'm going to make my own stipulation. Now, that envelope stays locked in my safe just as long as I don't see a trace of you two in my fair city again. Agreed? Oh, you can count on us, Your Honor. <laughs> I never did like New Orleans that much, no how. <laughs> <laughs> just so as we understand each other. Say, 
Clyde. Let me ask you a question. If you had a boxing match between Muhammad Ali and Sammy Davis Jr., how much do you think he'd draw? <laughs> Are you crazy? No, I'm serious. How, how much? And I suppose you'd want me to hypnotize Sammy. <laughs> no. You hear me? N O. No. Millions of people betting against Sammy Davis Jr. Ain't nobody gonna bet on Sammy Davis Jr. Man's on weight, but about 118 pounds. Fighting a man weighs 230 pounds. Ali be so comfortable, he'd come in weighing 340 pounds. Come in and hit Sammy dead on top of the head, break both his legs, that'd be the end of the fight. But if you hypnotize him, we go in there 800 to 100. Just a man now, don't you fear? I can love you now, don't you hear? I wanna do it again, 